Welcome back to American Latino TV. For someone who's a namesake for the ruler of the Aztec Empire, Moctezuma Esparza was bound to be a force to be reckoned with. Since emerging as a precocious leader in the Chicano movement of the 60s to redefining roles for Latinos in television and film in the 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way up to present day, Moctezuma just doesn't have it in him to shy away from speaking up for what he believes in. You know, we could probably do an entire show on him, but today we'll have to settle to explore just how Moctezuma has lived up to his name. Moctezuma Esparza may very well be the most powerful and influential Latino producer in film and television. But it's his rise through the ranks during a time when being Latino carried a stigma that made Moctezuma the most outspoken Latino in Hollywood. My father always talked to me about history. So I grew up hearing stories about the Mexican Revolution, about Don Benito Juarez, about the liberation movements throughout Latin America. He gave me enough that I had a sense of who I was and a sense of our role in, in the world and in history. That was a tremendous foundation for me and then also became a very rude shock when I went to school. They thought that everybody's name was Manuel Labor, manual labor. At UCLA, many of us got together who were of common background. There were Puerto Ricans, there were Cubans, there were Latin Americans, there were Mexicanos, there were Chicanos, who all felt a commitment that we needed to do something to change the possibilities for our brothers and sisters that we had left behind. And so we organized and we went back to the East LA high schools. What resulted was the largest student strike in the history of the United States up to that day. 20,000 students walked out saying, we want a good education, we want to go to college. His leadership during the act of civil disobedience would eventually be the inspiration for the movie, Walkout. But before he could even tackle feature films, Moctezuma had to break into the biz, just like everybody else. I understood that in order to have a career in Los Angeles, I needed to be part of the mainstream. I wasn't in Mexico, I wasn't in Latin America, I wasn't in Madrid, I didn't grow up in those countries. Spanish was not really my native language, English is my native language. Moctezuma would have to temporarily put his political strife aside to focus on mastering the language of film before he could even make a dent. I made a movie that was about social realism, about a painter in East LA. It didn't have an audience. And I learned that you need to think about who is the market for a project even before you make it. So the next movies that I worked on, which was very popular, The Milagro Beanfield War, that also became the basis for me to be able to gain credibility in Hollywood as a mainstream producer. Since Hollywood is not yet hiring Latinos to greenlight movies, I figured those of us who can should. And I was inspired by what Robert Rodriguez was doing, where he has you know, been supporting other people and he's been getting his own movies made. I saw the opportunity to create a mini studio, to raise some capital to be able to launch it, and uh, I took that step. Moctezuma stepped into his most influential role in Hollywood as founder of Maya Entertainment, making him one of the leading producers in the industry. What makes me think that I can do what I do? That I do it. I understand the creative power of an individual human being. This is a creative power that we all have. Our limitations don't define us, and our gifts don't define us. What define us is what we do with them. And that comes out of an inner conviction that in the beginning was the word, and with that word you create. 